Hello, and welcome to the second in this series of video tutorials from the IT Service. In this tutorial, we'll take our last look at conditional formatting a step further. You remember that in our first video, we looked at how to highlight an entire row when a single value in that row met a particular threshold. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at another usage of conditional formatting to make dynamic forms for people to fill in on screen. By dynamic, I simply mean that the form responds to one entry to allow you to be prompted for another entry. Here's a working example to show you where we'll end up. What we have in front of us is a booking form for some kind of workshop, the kind of thing that kids get sent on in summer holidays when parents want to get rid of them for a few days or weeks. First question, how many children are being booked onto the workshop? I use the drop down to select the number of children and I'm prompted for the name and age of that child or those children. If I have multiple children, I am prompted for multiple names. If I take the value out, all the fields disappear. Furthermore, when I choose a value, I get prompted in bright red because that field's required. But as soon as I've completed it, I'll put my own details in. There we go. And my age. The field's no longer bright red because though, although it was a mandatory field, it has been completed. Similarly with these others, if I say, yep, yeah, this child has an allergy, and uh, doesn't like eating beans, for example, again, the prompt went from red to black because I filled that in. Is this my first visit? Yes. No more questions. No, I get prompted, well, when did you last come? And once again, bright red, as soon as I complete it, it stops being red. What do we do for a misbehaving child? And again, as soon as we've got a satisfactory answer, no longer in red. So that's where we're aiming. These fields at the bottom, those aren't formatted in any way special, they're just white boxes, so there's nothing nothing to look at there. Let's take a look then at how we do it. I've got a copy of the form here that's got the raw data in place, but none of the conditional formatting, or at least only some of the conditional formatting. I've got the top field here done, so if I say yes, details of allergies goes bright red, no, stops being red, and the same, I've done the bottom one. I haven't yet, however, done the middle one, so we'll take a look at how we do that. And in the top of the section here, the number of children, first thing is I haven't done the drop-down yet. I thought it might be useful just to recap on how we do that sort of drop-down. It's not part of conditional formatting, but it may be something you weren't familiar with or had forgotten how to do. So we'll take a look at creating the drop-down, and then we'll, uh, we'll apply the formatting to this first name of child 1, age of child 1. The other two, if I put 2 or 3, those are both done already, but the first one isn't. So let's take a look at that. We'll kick off then with getting this drop-down arrow in place. That's the bit that's not really conditional formatting. To get the drop-down arrows in use, on the Data tab of the ribbon, we go to Validation. And by default, we're allowed to put any value into a cell. If we restrict that to a list of values, quite commonly the source will be a set of cells that contain those values. But in our case, I'm going to type the values in. So 1 and 2 and 3 are my allowed values, comma separate them. When I click OK, I now get my little drop down arrow and I can choose from a list. So if I choose 1, what I want is that this goes red. But a bit more precision is needed. There are two conditions here. Number one, if I have chosen that there's at least one child, but it still says name of child one, so I haven't yet completed their name, it must go bold red italics. But if it says one child and I have completed it, no longer says name of child one, it simply goes black on a white background with a border. Here's how we do it. On the Home tab, we have conditional formatting. I choose Manage Rules. I want to put in a couple of rules here. But each rule has two conditions, the number of children and what's already in this cell. So a new rule with a formula. And the formula has to test two things. So I use equals and 
to test for those two options. The AND function has an unlimited number of parameters, and as long as they all return true, the function itself returns true. So my first test then, this cell here, the number of children, has to be greater than zero. Comma, my second test, this cell here, still equals, quotes, name of child one, close quotes. Then I close my brackets. If both of those are true, then what do I want? Well, format that in bold and italics with red text. I'd like a nice red border around the whole thing. And I want a white background. And there we go. That's done. My second rule, new rule, again based on a formula, looks at where equals and we're still saying more than one child, uh, more than zero children, so at least one child. So that cell there, greater than zero, comma. But they have filled in the name. So this cell here, my second parameter is that this cell here, not equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, quotes, name of child one. That's it. So if there's more than one, uh, more than zero children, there is a child, but they filled in the name then format it, still with a white background, still with a border, but this time just an automatic black border, and this time the font regular and black. Click OK. And OK. We're done. It goes bold and red, and if I type the name of a child, it goes black, but with a white background. Same again, I'll do it one more time for this one so you get the uh, the chance to see it more than once. So, age of child one. Once again, home, conditional formatting, manage rules. First rule, using a formula, both these conditions have to be met. So, equals and brackets. This cell here, oh, no, that one there, has to be greater than zero. And also, comma, this cell here equals, quotes, age of child 1. If so, format that cell, bold and italic, red text, with a red border and a white background. There we go. But, second rule, using a formula, equals and this cell here greater than zero but also comma this cell here does not equal age of child one Ooh, there we go then display it with a white background with a border that's automatic color and with the font in regular style, not bold or italics, and black. Click OK, click OK, click OK. You get the idea. It's not exactly rocket science. It takes a little bit of imagination, it takes a little bit of thinking about, but once you've done it, it just becomes one of those kind of fairly dull, repetitive things. But the effect, really nice. So one, two, or three children highlights one, two, three fields. Two things to point out, I guess. Number one is that these fields here are exactly the same with one exception. And that is simply, if I look at the rules, that I'm checking a different number of children. So you can see here, this field here, C5, number of children, greater than one. Well, that means two or three. So that's what we use for this cell. And for this one here, same thing, conditional formatting. The rule is that the number of children cell C5 is greater than 2, so only 3 children. So we just have slightly different criteria for each of those cells, greater than 0 children, greater than two, uh, 1 children, uh, or greater than 2 children. Last thing then, the second thing to note is, what about the fact that we can see the text all the time? Yeah, it's highlighting it, it's making it nice and red and so on, but we can already see that text, and on our sample we couldn't. That's just colouring in. All we've got to do is take the text, Without any conditional formatting at all, just set the text color to the color of the background. 
So the default is same color text as the background, it can't be seen, but as soon as you trigger those rules by changing the value to one, two or three children, that's when we now change the formatting as per your rules. So there we go, exactly the same rule applies to these. Um, the only difference here is that I'm not checking the number of children, I'm simply saying if this cell is yes, then format this appropriately and so on. And I've also, if we just take a really quick look at the rule for this one, I've used the left function, rather than having to say if this cell contains details of allergies, the more typing I have to type in, the more chance I'll make a typo and a mistake. So what I've said is, if the leftmost seven characters of F8, so left F8, comma 7, is not equal to details. So I've only needed to put the first word of this in rather than the whole phrase. So there we go, that's that one done. I said I'd done the top one and I'd done the bottom one. I haven't done the middle one. Why? Well, because I can show you it's not quite as bad as it seems. Yet it is quite a lot of work. It's quite a lot of repetitive stuff. The result's worth it. And you can also do a format paint. If I use a format painter on this one and paint it on the second one, it doesn't just paint the formatting you can see. It paints all formatting, including conditional formatting. So now all I've got to do is tweak it because it will have exactly the same rule as the one above. And I don't quite want that, but at least the formatting's done. So conditional formatting, I want the second one, I've just pasted it over. Manage the rules one at a time. So this one is originally for row E8. Move that up so you can see it. There we go. It was originally for E8. This row is actually, that's better. This is actually row 11, so I now need to look at E11. I wanted to highlight this one, yes, there were allergies. I want to highlight this one when, no, it's not your first visit. So I'll change the condition from no, oh, sorry, from yes to no. So if E11 is no, then look at the leftmost seven characters will do, but of E, oh, sorry, of F11. And we're looking for that to say dates with the S in brackets like so. And click OK. And we want to do exactly the same here. So we just edit that cell, or rather that rule. We're looking not at E8, but E11. If that equals no, it's not my first visit. And the leftmost seven characters equal date brackets S close brackets, then highlight it like this. Click OK. OK. And the last thing to do then, set our default format to hide the text until we trigger the rules. So there we go. Hopefully we're now done. I check how many children are I'm arriving. One, two, or three. That looks good. Set it to one. Put the name in. It takes away the highlighting, but leaves it looking like a field. Do I have any food allergies? Bright red, got to fill this in. Is there anybody who can't eat ice cream? Ah, need to change that. That's not displaying in black. We can fix that in a moment. And my highlighting here not working. Always important to test these things out. I'm guessing it's probably a typo. That's the usual thing. And that one, of course, we haven't changed. So let's firstly look at this one here. Why has that not gone black? There we go. If I put back details of allergy, we can see it highlights in red, so we're almost there. But when I type in something else, it's not in black. Now I suspect I know the reason for that. If we go back to the rule, conditional formatting, manage the rule, I'm interested in this one, where it's not in red, but it should be in black. Why would it appear to be in black here, but not in black in fact? Well, if I look again at the, for, at the rule, again, it looks like it should be in black, where it's no longer saying details, 
But in fact, if I look at the format of the font, it says that the color is automatic. Automatic is not the same as black. Automatic looks like black here, but actually just means whatever color it was before you conditionally formatted. And of course, we said make it blue to fade in against the background. I need to say black, not automatic. Click OK, click OK, and click OK. And there we go. So details of allergy is red. Make it no, there are no allergies. It goes blue. But make it yes, there are allergies and cannot eat snails goes black. So that's that one sorted. Now why does this one not work? It's not the first visit. That should be highlighting. Let's have a look if we can figure out why. Highlight the cell that's not working. Home, conditional formatting, manage the rule. Should be going red. So let's have a look at this one first. And it says E11. Is E11 the right cell? E11, yes. E11 equals no. And there we go. And the leftmost seven characters, let me just move that up slightly, the leftmost seven characters of F8. I forgot that I was using row 11 here as well, so we just need to change that from 8 to 11. So if E11 is no, and F11's leftmost seven characters. And now, hopefully, that'll work. There we go. So set that to yes, disappears. Set it to no, it appears, pop a date in, and the same thing again, I've got that coming up as automatic colour, not black. So the last thing, back to where we were, conditional formatting, manage rules. You can see it's not difficult stuff, but there's lots of little things to be aware of. Um, so just take your time with these, and ultimately I think you'll find that the result's really worth it. It makes a really nice dynamic, user-friendly form that people will actually find easy to fill in. And that's important because if people find it easy to fill in, you're going to get the data you want rather than having to send the form back and say, sorry, you missed this field out, for example. And there we go. I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, why not check out some of our other videos? There is, of course, the other video on conditional formatting. That's also in our series here on YouTube or on our website at www.theitservice.co.uk. Or also take a look at the website for tutorials on Microsoft Access and one or two others on Office as well. Thanks for watching.